In this problem, we're going to be using the coupled thermal electrical feature of electroflow to study trace heating uh, in a three-dimensional natural convection environment. Uh, here, we're going to be creating the geometry for the traces. Uh, most of the time, uh, you actually read in and or import a trace geometry from the Gerber or ODB++ format. But in case you don't have these uh, this early in the design, you may want to actually create the geometry. Here we do that by uh, entering the outline, the coordinates for the outline of the traces. Uh, for the first section of the trace, uh, these coordinates are, are given in an Excel file. So we'll take that and we create uh, that section. And then the second section is a mirror image of the first one. So we'll use the copy mirror feature of Electroflow to create that one. And the two sections are connected using electrical link feature of Electroflow. And uh, we'll use that. And then we have 50 amps going through one side of the trace, following through the link and coming out of the other end. And that will result in the Julian heating in the traces. And uh, in addition to the traces, we have two components that are sitting on the board and uh, each one dissipating 0.25 watts. Uh, the traces are embedded in a PCB uh, with a dimension of 6 inches by 4 inches by uh, 0 0.09 inch and the trace thickness is 0 0.015 inch. Uh, inside the board. So the objectives for this exercise will be uh, creating the geometry for the printed circuit board and the traces and the components and then we create the mesh, define the material properties and uh, connect the traces using the links then we create the components on the top of the board, apply the current to the traces and power to the components then we need to extend the domain so we have uh, we can do natural convection uh, CFD analysis. We create the analysis deck and run it, read the result, and display it. After that, we will place the uh, board in an enclosure with a constant temperature, and we'll run it again and look at the results. So with that, we start uh, creating the geometry. Okay, we start by clicking on Create Model, and as always, we have to give the model a name. Call this one PCB Trace, and Save. And this will open up the uh, graphics windows of eFlow, and uh, we go to the model parameters. We change the unit of length to inches, give it some tolerance, and set electrical effects on, because we're going to be using it. And now we go create the geometry. And first we want to create the board. So we keep it cuboid. And the board was 6 inches by 4 inches by 0.09. Um, give it a uh, FR4 user defined material. And we'll define it later. So this will create the board. And we refresh the screen. Okay, now we can go ahead and. Uh, define the traces. So we go and choose complex uh, geometry. This gives us a way of uh, picking the points around an object and extruding it. So here we define the origin, x at zero, uh, x and y at zero, and we give the, or the z and uh, center of the board, and choose the z-axis for extruding, and we extrude 0.015 inches. Uh, we give it some tolerance, and that shows how closely it's going to be calculated. Now we could enter the x, y values, but I, as I mentioned, we have all these values saved in an Excel file. So I'll open the Excel file, and we'll copy the coordinates, go back there and paste it. And now we need to give it our traces and material, and it's important to give it a priority, otherwise it won't be a model and PCB will override it. Okay, now the first section is created. Uh, to create the second section, we go 
to object solid and pick the first section so that opens the modified geometry form and now we come and we go to uh, mirror so we pick mirror copy because we want to keep the original we pick the mirror plane as Y and we need to set the Y location so we choose 2 which is the center of the board that's uh, the board is 4 inches so 2 will be center and press apply it will create the second section okay now with the two sections created uh, we have the traces inside the board now we can go and create the mesh the default mesh seems to be fine for this model we keep that right there and uh, now let's go define our material properties for FR4 because we define the user defined material uh, this gives us an opportunity to give the row C sub P and conductivity but this is steady state the only thing we need is the conductivity so use 3.75 and apply for that so with that we are finished with it now we can define the the link connecting the two traces together so we go to surface and now we go near one of the surfaces and that takes the surface center and we go to the surface center of the other side uh, here we could define a wire of any length and cross-section area but we just wanted to connect them using a very small resistance so you use a user defined electrical and give it a value of 0 0.0001 since we are not calculating uh, is the interest in calculating the heat and that creates the connection okay so now we've uh, created the geometry for the traces now let's go and define the components so we go to cuboid and here we can define a component by giving a center and a dimension but we choose to do the min max dimension so it goes from 2.75 to 3.25 in the x direction and we enter the values in the y direction for the first one is 0.5 to 1 and it's on top of the board so it's going to be 0.09 to whatever the thickness of the component is we give it the material of copper and apply so the first component is created now to copy the second component we will pick the first one that we made and we want to copy it so we go to translate copy and enter the distance uh, which is 2.5 inches press apply and that creates the second component okay now we go and apply the boundary conditions so the first boundary condition we want to apply is the electrical current we go there and we choose the surface and then we come click in the region and we go near the surface and pick that and give it 50 amps that would be positive 50 going into that surface now at the other end we'll pick that surface and use minus 50 so negative 50 that means current coming out of that surface uh, that defines our electrical boundary conditions now we go and create heated volume and we pick the two solids and it says per solid so that 0 0.25 will be applied to each one of the solids okay so with that defined now we go and check our model but uh, through the member display so this allows you to go layer by layer and see what materials are modeled and this is exactly what goes to the solver this is always a good idea to make sure that you didn't overwrite something uh, to check your model now let's go to electric connections and check our circuits so as we can see we have three conducting regions created the two inactive ones are the components there is no voltage or electrical uh, current is associated with it if you click on the active one and show that shows our two traces and uh, we can see that uh, if you wanted to s create a group and look at the boundary conditions you could do it right here but uh, 
we here we just want to look at the uh, traces created and make sure that's modeled correctly and with that we've checked the model and everything is as expected now we go to uh, extend the domain by defining user define uh, key planes so we want to extend the model in the Z direction so let's go ahead and uh, go from negative one so there is room for the flow to develop to positive three uh, in the Z direction and with that we have an extended model and we can perform the analysis so let's go ahead and run this model and we click on run as we've done in the past and here you can see we have the 948 I believe uh, elements in the electrical field and so voltage is being solved along with temperature pressure velocities and everything else and it proceeds until you get to the converged solution and we'll wait for that and we've achieved the steady state so we read the results is automatically loaded temperature is the default result uh, so with the uh, cut plane we can move in X direction and you can see in the X window how the flow is forming at different uh, planes uh, similarly in the Y plane and you can go to any plane and examine your uh, result so let's go to the Z plane and that shows the flow on top of the board temperature and now if you go somewhere inside the board and change the results to voltage you can see the voltage distribution and if you go one layer up there is nothing here's the plane of the traces so here we have uh, positive 0.036 to negative 0.036 we didn't supply any voltage boundary conditions so it's symmetrically solved uh, because of the current boundary condition given so now we run this thing uh, in an open natural convection environment and we go ahead and uh, create the geometry of the enclosure let's put an enclosure around this uh, board and run it again so we go to this create solid type enclosure and, and this gives you a way of creating six walls quickly so we give the min and maximum dimensions or coordinates of the enclosure okay and uh, we now set the wall thickness uh, 0.1 inch choose a material for our enclosure aluminum and apply so this creates an enclosure around our board now we need to go and uh, set the temperature of the enclosure to 20 degrees so to do that we go to of course boundary conditions temperature and uh, with the selection control and surface we click in the region and we go near every surface that we want to set the temperature of so we choose all the walls with the shift down so we can do a multiple selection and we pick all the walls in all the directions keep it at 20 degrees and set apply so that will fix the 20 degrees at the external walls now we don't have to uh, mesh the mesh is already uh, extended throughout this domain and we're ready to run so you press the run button and as we've seen in the past that will open up the solver uh, run window um, and you can see on the bottom on the top right uh, it shows the temperature going up on the left side uh, you could see uh, the uh, the different equations being solved the, the the red block is on the equation that's being solved at the moment so it's going very fast uh, going through pressure momentum equations uh, velocity correction which is the uh, for the conservation of mass and then voltage field all of these being solved for uh, all the elements in the model and 
if you look at the bottom right, you could see more detail about each equation being solved. Of course, you can size these windows to get more information uh, if you if you need to. So it looks like we're quickly getting to the converge solution in real time, and uh, we are almost there. So with that, um, we press yes, the results will be loaded, and it will take us automatically to the plane plot that we can see as usual, the uh, temperature uh, as the colored uh, and velocity size according to the maximum velocity. You can zoom in any corner, of course, to see how the flow is developing and the temperature details. So this is the end of this exercise. Hopefully it gives you some idea how to use uh, electrical and thermal analysis for trace heating.